Okay, so we just talked about residuals, and we talked about also the, okay, so we just talked about how to create a least squares regression line in Minitab, and then we also talked about residuals. So recall, um, it, when we're looking at the graph of the residuals, Let's take these three graphs for instance. Let's assume that these three graphs are residual graphs, so three separate uh, data sets. Okay, so this let's just take this uh, graph for instance. So our least squares regression line is going to be this imaginary horizontal line that goes through the middle here, uh, marked zero. And then this is going to correspond to the height of uh, each of the residuals. So some of the residuals are positive and some of the residuals are negative. When the residuals are positive, that means the data points are above the regression line. When the residuals are negative, that means the data points are below the regression line. So looking at this plot here, there seems to be some fairly uh, random scatter about the line, um, an even number of points that are above the line, an even number of points that are below the line. There's no discernible pattern. Things kind of seem random here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that A, the presentation of the data is, is or the distribution of the data is random. So I'm just going to say it's random scatter. And when you have random scatter uh, across the least squares regression line, that's a good sign. So um, the residuals do not contradict the linearity of the, uh, or the linear assumption. Okay, whereas if we see here in part B, there's a definite arc and what this might indicate is that there's some type of curved relationship with the data. So here it seems as if the data points are below the regression line, and then here it's above, and then here it's below. So this might indicate that there's some type of polynomial relationship uh, between, between the data. So here, what I would say is that there's a definite curved pattern, which would indicate a linear model is not a good fit. Again, the reason for that is because there could be a curve that would better fit this data. Okay, now in part C, um, it looks like there's very little scatter about the regression line early on, but then as we get out further into the x direction, there seems to be a great deal of scatter. So what we might say here is that uh, the regression, or um, sorry, uh, linear regression, or how about this? This linear model is a good fit uh, for relatively small x values, but is not a good predictor of large x values. Okay, so now let's go down to here. So again, we have to question the suitability of the linear model. So here I would say that there is random scatter, so that's good. Uh, here there's here there's again in, in part A of this uh, second set, there's definitely a curved pattern here, so that's something that you want to look for. Um, this is a little harder to tell, right, because there seems to be some really good scatter, but you can still make out a small pattern. Uh, and this is sort of the reverse. Part B here is a reverse of what we had in part C up here, where there seems to be good scatter about the regression line across the x-axis, but uh, early on, we have that um, our regression line is not as good a predictor uh, as when it's here. Uh, and the reason for that is, is because the residuals here are large in magnitude, so that means that our actual values relative to our predicted values, that difference is high. So there's a great deal of error here, and then there's smaller error as we're going, increasing in x value.